Gospel of Luke, 15th chapter. For the sake of emphasis, I, I want you to join me at verse 25. I want you to have a, a wide contextual window that we may study on this morning. Luke chapter 15, beginning at verse 25, this is the King James Version. While you're changing there, those that are visiting with us, we are grateful that you're with us on this morning. Luke 15 and verse 25, if you have it, say amen. amen. In the words of God read, Now his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come. And because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Y'all still with me? Amen. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a goat that I may make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with heartless, you killed the fatted calf for him. For the sake of emphasis, I want you to return to verse 29. So he answered and said to his father, Go, these many years I've been serving you I never transgressed your command at any time and yet you never gave me a goat that I might make merry with my friends continuing our series on this morning looking for the real me I want to talk to you this morning church on the subject what makes me happy? What makes me happy? And we began last week with a very interesting segment of this particular scripture. We reviewed the fact that there are two audiences. One audience, rather, two audiences, but the story is is positioned to meet one particular group. If you recall in the Luke, Luke, the 15th chapter, begins by saying tax collectors and sinners came to Jesus. Y'all remember that? And there was another group there, the Pharisees and the scribes. They began to mutter, mutter that this man receives or eats with sinners. We talked about last week how the younger son, the younger brother goes and he asks his father for an inheritance. If you recall last week, we discussed the fact that an inheritance is something you get when somebody dies. And so in essence, the younger son is asking, Father, I wish you were dead. Because that which I want is more important than you. So the younger son goes out, he lives his life, he squanders all his money, lives in prodigal living to spend extravagantly, recklessly, in excess. Bible says, Jesus tells the story, he says, well, the younger son got to a point where he had nothing left. He found somebody to work for, work with the worst animal in the Judaic tradition, the pig. And it got so bad that not even pigs had anything extra for this son. He began to rehearse in his mind, if you recall last week, that, that in my father's house, I had everything made. He, 
desire to, to find the right way to say what he wanted to say when he finally met his father. And so he gets to his father, and his father, if you recall, sees him fall off, and the father runs. We discussed on last week that respectable Jewish men did not run. You certainly did not run after a child that has humiliated you. But the father's love prevailed most. If you recall the last week, the father gives him a ring to put on his finger. He gives him a robe to put across his shoulders. He kills this succulent, uh, fatted calf that's only given during special holidays. Y'all remember that? Yeah. They're having a party. And as the story goes, last week we discussed that, that while the party is going on, the hands are in the air and waving everywhere. Say amen. The older son is out in the field. Jesus says that the, that the older son won't go in the party. He humiliates his father, the host of the party, and he leaves the party and comes outside and pleads with the son. And if you recall, the son says, what is this for? You never put a ring on my finger. You never put a robe on my shoulders. You never kill the fatted calf for me. If you remember all last week, he was sort of justified in his accusation and indictment because all that was remaining at the house would one day belong to the older brother. So the ring that goes on the younger brother's finger, the robe that goes across the younger brother's shoulders, the food that is killed belongs to the obedient son. But the father stuns the older brother. I say your brother was dead. And now he's alive. He was lost. Now he's found. And the question that we asked you all last week, we talked about the idea of looking for the real me. Who are you really? We asked you all last week to begin to study this passage and read and, and, and let the text talk to you. We talked about exegetical study and expositional study and the fact that we're going to shine a light on the text and the light is going to tell you, the text rather, will tell you who you are. We need not to predetermine who we are and read the text because the Bible is a mirror in our lives and it shows us who we really are. And so the question this morning is, what makes you happy? What makes me happy? When we consider this idea of happiness, there are several things that make us all happy. When I first visited this fine city, I was taken to the great restaurant downtown. If you haven't been, you gotta go, called Saza. I like to say it like that, because that's how I feel. Saza. <laughs> I went there the first trip. The second trip, I went to Saza. And y'all know I came in March and in April, and both times, yes, both times, Brother Simmons, I went to Sazas. When we moved here within the first two weeks, twice, I went to Sazas. There's this salad, Brother Montgomery, this salad that, that's got this blue cheese and, 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 and uh, an Italian dressing and it's chopped, and, and y'all, it makes me happy. It got this pasta that's got these big chunks of, 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 well, I don't really know what's all in it, that's the scary thing, but it's got lobster in it, I know. And when I eat it, y'all, it makes me happy. Now don't get confused, man. What I, what I mean is that it, it connects with something in me. Not just my stomach, but it connects with something in me that makes me feel a certain way. And, and, and so, what I realized is that my love for Sazas, they should thank me y'all for this today. <laughs> my love for Sazas shapes my paradigm. You gotta understand that the things that make you happy, they, 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 they have a way of shaping the way you see things. They, they shape the way you think, the way you function. Sometimes even what you believe. And when you try to consider who you really are, you have to begin to determine, number one, how do I see things? 